Okay, we're back. We're live. We're Think Tech Talks here on Wednesday. And you know what that means. Wednesday is Energy Day here in Hawaii, the state of clean energy. The world knows that we are the state of clean energy. Whoa. Okay. And we have our special guest, Mina Morita, the chair of the PUC, the Public Utilities Commission. And we have Sharon Moriwaki sitting in the gallery. Raise your hand so I can see. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> and Ray Starling, both co-chair, co-hosts with me. <laughs> Not co-chair, <laughs> co-hosts. And we're calling this schmoozing with the chair. That's that's great. Thank I love you. that. <laughs> Thank you for coming down. Oh, my pleasure. You've been so open. You know, you go out and talk to people. It's really wonderful. That kind of transparency, everybody appreciates. Well, I think you know um, the. PUC is doing a lot of important work right now, and I think people have to understand our uh, function and our role um, in driving transformation. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Really important. We are because we are at a transformation for sure. Uh, can we can we start with uh, your recollection and uh, your reaction? Okay. Whoops, sorry. Negawatt moment. Uh, <laughs> the most important. The most important. Negawatt moment. <laughs> okay. Now, there's a name you need to know. The name is Keith Block. Okay, Keith Block is from uh, Hawaii Energy, and he is the Hawaii Energy Business Operations Manager, and he's a very important person. Why? Because Hawaii Energy and energy efficiency are very important things, and they will play a role in our Clean Energy Day program in July. Very important. So, Keith, warm us up. Tell us about clean Hawaii energy and energy efficiency now and whatever kind of special incentive you may have today as opposed to other days. Okay, well, Jay, well, as you well know, we're um, the state's uh, energy efficiency programs. We service uh, all counties except for Kauai, uh, and we provide uh, energy efficiency rebates and incentives to encourage customers to uh, take out old inefficient equipment and put in uh, new, more efficient equipment. And today what we're trying to do is trying to completely eliminate uh, incandescent exit signs from the entire state of Hawaii. Uh, as you know, in, you know uh, exit signs are all over the place and they're running 24-7. So in the, in the past, they used to be uh, an incandescent light bulb that was you know, behind that exit sign. Today, if you have an incandescent exit sign, that's just crazy. So we kind of took a look at that and we said, hey, this is just crazy. We need to increase our incentive and just blow them out, just get them off the island. So uh, today through the end of May, if you install a uh, LED exit sign, you get $40 per fixture now instead of the $20 it was before. And that $40 covers almost the entire cost of the uh, exit sign itself. You're so really you get, serious this time. We're serious about this one. We should never have another incandescent exit <laughs> sign in Hawaii at all. So we're doubling our incentive for exit signs and hopefully everybody will take advantage of this if you have one of those old exit signs. That's spectacular, you know. I, 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 you know, you, we hear, we study entrepreneurs, we study the innovation, you know, generation, we study all, all the creatives out there, but we don't give enough credit to Hawaii Energy because you guys may, must be up at three o'clock in the morning, you know, what do we do this week, you know, and, and this is another example of that level of creativity, fabulous, Keith. Well, the kicker is, the kicker really is if you, uh, if you look around and count the lights, that might be incandescent still, and there are quite a few still around. Uh, for every one that you change out, for basically no, no net cost to you because of the new rebate, uh, you're going to save uh, close to $100 per year for every light. So go count them and think about what you're going to do uh, for your vacation next year because you can, you can uh, bank up the, uh, the savings. Uh, from your electric bill for just changing out this uh, single light uh, behind the uh, exit sign. And that's right now. Could be more later. That, that that's say. true. It could yeah, be more yeah, later. Yeah. When you think about where these signs might be, I mean, like in a stairwell, on, and if you have 40 floors. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, we have an on air sign over there. Mm -hmm. It looks like an exit sign. <laughs> Maybe I'll negotiate with Keith later to see if he could treat that as an exit sign. <laughs> <laughs> On well, the other hand, it could be an LED already. Yeah, I bet it, it might be, yeah. You've got some cool lights around here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Okay, well, uh, uh, so is that, do you want to you just repeat the precise technique by which people can actually take advantage of this incentive? Yeah, all of our incentives are uh, clearly available online at our hawaiienergy.com, hawaiienergy, one word, dot com website. You can go there and see the exit sign uh, for a limited time uh, incentive right now and any of our other incentives as well. Doing a great job. Creativity is its own reward. It's fabulous. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Ray. What a great organization, Hawaii Energy, thinking at 3 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Well, there's another little known fact uh, that we work directly for the Public Utilities Commission. So. You must be proud. Of Very <laughs> proud of all. And, and again, you know, you look at um, there's been no growth in load for since you've been in existence. About five years, <laughs> yes. And, uh, you know, they're, they're the key drivers in the energy efficiency portfolio standards. And um, we've been on track to meet or, or exceed our goals by 2030. So, yes. And it is the cheapest option. I mean, this is the first thing that we need to do um, is, is look at efficiency before we go to higher cost options. There's nothing cheaper than not using energy in the first place. Yep. True. Mm -hmm. That's the negawatt moment for this Wednesday on Hawaii, the state of clean energy. Thank you. Thank you so much, Keith. Keith Block, Hawaii Energy, Business Operations Manager. Okay, we go forward now, and we're going to talk a little about what happened, what, is it two, two weeks, weeks ago, ago. Mm -hmm. already? Um, on, was it uh, one week ago? Two weeks. Uh, two, two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. When everybody seemed like in the world devolved into Maui for mm -hmm. this fabulous conference on uh, the utility of the future. Right. And you were there, Mina, you spoke there. So can you give us your reactions of how it went? Maybe a little pricey about what you said also. Okay, I think, um, first of all, there were a lot of good, I, you gotta hand it to the program committee and putting it together, they, they brought in a lot of really good um, speakers and diverse speakers. And this is a conversation uh, long in coming that as, as we move forward with our energy transformation, the utility business model needs to change. And where do we go? Um, how do we do it? Um, uh, how do we facilitate not only the change in the utility business model, but a large part of it is um, uh, the regulation of, of um, the public utility. Um, let me see, where shall I start? Well, just a um, comment on that is that, you know, we're remaking our the regulation, we're remaking our utility, we're remaking our energy system, we are remaking our society, effectively. We are in a exactly. huge transformation. How we think about um, electricity, how we use electricity, uh, how we work, play, uh, live, um, it is changing. And, uh, you know, the role of the customer is different. You know, the customer has choices now and, 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 and is becoming a more active part in that decision making. And you said this is a systems change and it's one of the things I focused at at the, at the conference that we have to look at the total system. And one of the important things about this transformation is that it's a diverse portfolio of resources and technology. I think the most important thing that we have to look at is um, what is the role of the utility? And, um, you know, I gave my vision of the utility as a systems integrator that, um, you know, the grid is so important, is the most critical infrastructure in moving electrons, um, uh, making the system reliable. And so this is the utility's role in, in managing the re reliability of the grid um, and where eventually um, they become agnostic to the source of electricity or the kind of technology, but they're more focused on um, pricing. So I, I think in the future, how do you develop this cooperative system as well as a competitive system mm. so we get the best pricing? 
It's radical change it's all radical, around for yeah. everybody, and, yeah. and we're really the first state mm -hmm. to undertake it on this scale. Mm -hmm. So everybody's looking at us and right. coming, and there were some there in, uh, in Maui at the conference that mm -hmm. were right. there to not only participate, but sort of watch what we're doing. You know, and if you look at trends of various sectors, um, you know, the key is data. You know, how quickly can you gather, analyze, synthesize, and use that information to be more productive and efficient? And you can plan going forward. You can adapt your moves to right. what you find and, is and happening. And that's what the smart grid is all about, the ability to process da data timely and use it to increase efficiency and productivity. I think it's great that people find out, you know, one way or the other, they find out that we are involved in the in this uh, transformation, and that we have we have this ability to be number one, mm -hmm. because then, then the whole state can start thinking differently about it, and they can say to themselves, okay, we can be number one. Right. Let's go out and be number one. Well, you know, <laughs> so the Maui conference was extremely extremely important in in making. Hawaii aware of this dialogue taking place and, and this whole transformational process and the role of the utility in it. Last week I was in San Francisco for a Power tra Transformation Summit and I participated on a regulatory panel. So it was really interesting because um, you know they put up all of this information about Hawaii in comparison with the rest of the country and we're such outliers. You know. Um, for example, uh, some of your um, viewers, listeners, may have heard of the duck curve. And the duck curve was um, presented in California as part of their studies on, on renewables. And you know they're talking about being affected by the duck curve in what 2020. What's the duck curve? Oh, so the duck curve is um, where during daytime, in the middle of the day when you have a lot of solar, the load for the utility drops. And then as you approach evening, um, you know, it, it peaks to the duck head. So, so when the load drops, it's the duck belly, and then it raises up to the <laughs> evening peak, which is the head. Okay, we've all and, seen that curve. And usually, yeah. yeah. And, and that's, it's an unusual curve, and that's why they're talking about it. Now, right. They've never had to deal with that kind and, of a and curve And you're before. actually dealing with two peaks now you know, a, a kind of a early morning peak and an evening peak. So that's a challenge for the it's utility. Like getting up in the morning, mm -hmm. right? Getting mm -hmm. ready for work, and oh. then it's coming home from work. Right. And, and, and during that time you're gone, the sun comes up, so you've got all of this PV that's mm -hmm. building the, uh, the, the electric uh, capacity, but you're not using as much during the yeah, day. So so you, yeah. and, and at times it may cut, cut into the, the um, minimum um, uh, generation for for your um, utility, base, utility yeah. base load units, and so you know it's they out this big thing about California, you know, facing the duck curve in 2020. We live the duck curve now. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's uh, you know very prominent in in uh, KIUC's uh, Quiet Island Utility Cooperative uh, RFP for um, energy storage. But, you know, it's happening in Hawaii right now. Mm -hmm. That's fabulous. But the worst part about it here is that we are not able to connect to other utilities so. like the mainland. So when they have mm -hmm. a duck curve, they can move power from to and from a, an adjacent use mm -hmm. utility. But we can't do that. But we, but we know what we must it. do. You know, it, it shows us what we must do. Yeah, uh, yeah. part of it is load shifting. Um, it, 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 Flattening, they call it flattening up yeah. the duck. Mm -hmm. And so, and so, I mean, I, two things come to mind. One is, um, you know, storage. Mm -hmm. If you had storage, you'd make the, the curve go flat, right? Because um, you store still, the excess well, when you have excess, and then you use it. Still an expensive you. option. Sure. But um, probably more better load management. Kind of demand rates. response, yeah, demand yeah. response. So you can manage that every mm -hmm. day. Manage your loads. Yeah, it's various tools. And, and the other way is the other way is you uh, work at night, 
sleep during the day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sure, if the electricity is cheaper. Inverted, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, what, what was your sense of the, uh, you know, the, the upshot of the meeting? I mean, wh where did it go? Uh, where, where did it leave things for the future? Well, I, again, uh, being part of that summit, it was very exciting because everybody has their eye on Hawaii. I mean, we have, um, we're at the bleeding edge. Um, there are a lot of people with good ideas willing to come in and help us be resources for us in, in really looking at the utility model as well as the regular regulatory reform needed to support uh, yeah. this kind of transformation. And, uh, and I think bottom line is we're probably 10 years ahead of everybody else. And uh, you know, to me, uh, just hearsay, but to me, uh, you know, the remarkable, there were a couple of remarkable things that happened. One is the whole PUC went. Mm -hmm. That was something. Oh, All three of you. Well, the number of PUC, um, not only the commissioners, but also some of our staff, but the number of utility executives yes. that were there, too, and participating. Yes. Yeah. Willing to talk, willing to wrestle with the problem and, yeah. and look down the road and, and see if there could be a collaboration. This is a great thing. Yeah. And, and uh, again, you know, we're an island state, and our problems are very different from, you know, the continental U.S. where you can move power um, all over the place from, you know, north, south, east, west. Um, you know, we, we have some constraints here, and we have some high prices um, for electricity, but we also have lots of opportunity should we be able to control our pricing. Would you have imagined this conference, say, in 2008? Would you have imagined? Never. No. <laughs> Not a chance. I didn't imagine it till it happened, actually. <laughs> you're really, I mean, I, I, surprised. I just, I, you just didn't expect it, the way it came, mm -hmm. up, came out. Yeah, and, you know, uh, I've been, I've heard conversations where, you know, people say, oh, we won't have a utility anymore. You know, we don't need the grid. You know, I think, uh, if you look at the DG issues now, you know, it only serves 10% of the, the customers. You know, we're trying to design a system that benefits everybody. And, um, you know, not everybody has access to um, uh, our current uh, clean energy programs. And, and so, you know, the real, the challenge is designing a system that benefits everyone. And I think one of the few ways that you can do it is with a healthy, viable utility, a um, modernized grid, um, and um, utilizing all of your assets, whether they're utility, non-utility, centralized, decentralized, um, um, and uh, making the right investments, and then uh, optimizing all of those kinds of assets. You must be up at 3 o'clock in the morning also. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I can't, you know, it, it, it's a daunting task and um, when you think that the decisions that you make affect every single person, every single business um, throughout the state. Every single appliance, yeah. <laughs> every single <laughs> clock and radio and television <laughs> and I mean, electric it, stuff, with everything. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, we're, we're living through exciting times because it's a whole system transformation. It, um, probably won't happen for another hundred years. You know, um, this current m model is, you know, a hundred years old, and and you know we're taking it into a new era. Yes. And we're making significant investment, capital investments, that several generations will be paying for. So, you know, uh, our, our decisions have to be spot on. Every, every day is a historic day. When you're in a transformation every day, and every minute in our program is a historic minute, that's why we're <laughs> going to take a break now. <laughs> Here we're schmoozing with the chair, Mina Morita, the chair of the PUC, uh, and uh, uh, we have Ray Starling and Sharon Moriwaki as uh, co-hosts with me. Here on Think Tech Talks, Hawaii, the state of clean energy. We'll be right back after this short break.
Aloha, I'm Jay Fidel. And this he is Think Tech Hawaii. We're broadcasting <laughs> live water. from the Pioneer <laughs> Plaza in downtown Honolulu. We raise public awareness. Thank you, Keith. Thank you, Keith. Energy and globalism in Thanks, Hawaii. Keith. You want to take a look at my on air sign? Our sector will give us new prospects in the global market. You should have seen us a few years ago. The lights are so cool. A few years ago, you couldn't walk in here. It was so hot because he had incandescents, and then even when he got his LED, I mean his CFL lights, they were still hot. But these things are cool. Not only that, they don't they don't use half the juice. We we would have circuit breakers. Uh, I'm going off all the time. <laughs> this is much better. Okay, so we can talk about the bills of interest. It's all okay. just a click away. Whatever. We want to do whatever, whatever we can to keep Hawaii relevant, Probably connected, and thriving. The big in the one for us. Okay, 10 seconds. We hope you will help us in those efforts. Tune in today. This is Think Tech. I'm Jay Biden. Okay, here we go. Mahalo. Okay, we're back. We're live. We're at Think Tech Talks on Wednesday, and you know that means Hawaii, the state of energy day. Schmoozing with the chair, Chair Mina Morita, chair of the PUC. And um, Ray Starling and Sharon Moriwaki are my, my co-hosts today for this discussion. And we'd like to sail into the question of, so what bills you like, chair? Okay, uh, the bill that's <laughs> Notice how really... Notice <laughs> put that question. <laughs> the bill that's very important to us is the Senate Bill 2587. And, um, you know, thanks to Senator Baker for understanding what the PUC is going through. And basically what it does, it transfers the PUC from the Department of Budget and Finance to the Department of Consumer, um, Commerce and Consumer Affairs. DCCA. DCCA. And why this is really important is budget and finance is the bean counters. Um, they're not aligned with our mission. Uh, nor do they truly understand our mission. So when they look at our budget, it's, you know, um, they look at it like any other state agency, um, where uh, DCCA, is, they regulate private sector. They understand what we do. So uh, that's basically the, um, uh, the gist of that bill. Mm -hmm. And since I've been chair, and what the, the um, Hawaii Energy Policy Forum has been working hard since, I think it was, um, was it 2004 that the, with the audit, the management audit of the PUC? 10 and years then, already. Yeah. And, and then the follow-up with the reorganization bill, uh, trying to get the PUC adequate staffing and resources to move forward. Well, not much has been done. And um, one of my goals at the PUC is to build the capacity within the PUC to um, address um, the critical issues before us. You know, having the technical and economic expertise to ask the right questions of the utilities. Um, and in order to do that, we have to pay com competitive salaries. And, uh, you know, I have the hardest working commissioners and staff, um, but, you know, we have to compete with private sector um, to retain our staff. And sure. we spend a lot of money training our staff because this is such specialized work. Every day you train them, they become more valuable for the oh, private sector. I'll tell you, mm -hmm. exactly, and that's what happens, you know, they, they can get 50% more from the private sector or, you know, go someplace else and get paid less but not have as, as much of a headache. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's, you know, my main goal is building the capacity at the PUC. And, and um, you know, the other important role that we've taken on is um, we, we don't just preside over applications that um, come before us. I mean, we're initiating proceedings. I mean, so we're trying to lead 
in, in, in this transformation You have the process. power, so, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we have, um, I mean, there's a lot of deference to the PUC um, because these issues are so complicated, because the impact is so great um, that, you know, it's necessary to, again, um, have the capacity to deal with these complex issues so people are confident in, in our decisions that, um, you know, we're truly there to serve the public interest and, and, um, and the public good. That's good. I mean, I think it's really important that, that the PUC be both directions. Mm -hmm. you, you take what comes in front of you, but you also yeah. state things. I mean, you, you make things happen. Yeah. Proactive. I think things are really different for the PUC now than, than they were back in the mm -hmm. days when there were, you know, pretty standardized rate cases and, right. and they're, they're, the cost of power was not going up very mm -hmm. much. Oil price stayed down. And so people kind of, it was, it was a fairly straightforward way to do it. Right. But now, all bets are off. You have to think outside the box, look for new ways to get mm -hmm. things done and take some risk once in a while. And, and you need a staff that's, mm -hmm. that's really the best you can put on, right. uh, on your staff, the right. best people you can put on your staff, and you have to pay them to, yeah. to come and do it. Some come because they want to do public service, mm -hmm. and that's why a lot of them are there now. Oh, yeah. But, I, you know, uh -huh. it, at some point, you know, the competition out there in terms of t taking your people away yeah. is out there, and they can pay a lot more. Yeah. And that just shouldn't be the case Always anymore. subject to being raided, you know. Always. An employer could call one day and say, sure. hi, I'll double your salary. <coughs> you let them you run that risk every day. Every day. They get yeah. their training in the business <laughs> at, you know, at the PUC, and then they go work for somebody who's uh, then going to use that knowledge to, you know, perhaps uh, uh, oppose things at the PUC. And, and you know, in a way, I, you know, people do move on and, you know, they, you know, they take, um, their their skill sets into other areas, which in turn can benefit the PUC in that mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. That that, but it, I need help now. <laughs> you know, right? I, sure. I, that's that's the know, bottom line, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and you know, but, just talking about going back to mm -hmm. something you said a few minutes ago, Mina, is that the the, the role of the PUC changes uh, now uh, when you consider that we're sending out for foreign oil, what is it, I don't know the number, seven billion dollars. Mm -hmm. So in effect, you're regulating that. This is yeah. a burden, a huge yeah. burden, and critical to the state's economy and its future. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, what you do and how, and how things react to what you do, mm -hmm. you know, will make us or break us in, yeah. in the relatively near term. Mm -hmm. you know? Anyway, so what bill were you talking about when you're talking about trying to preserve the staff? Okay, so it's, I'm sorry, it's House Bill 2587. That, is that the DCCA bill? Or oh, I'm sorry. One? Let me see. Oh, okay. No, it's Senate Bill 2948. Okay. That's, sorry. Got and, the numbers and, and wrong. What are the provisions of that? So, um, there's a whole bunch of stuff, but um, basically it makes a transfer and it talks about the relationship between the commission and DCCA that we're, we're administratively attached, but re we retain our um, authority. I mean, you know, uh, that makes sense. That we're semi-autonomous. Yeah. Um, yeah. Have to be. Yeah. yeah. So that's that separates the chair from the, the director of yeah. DCCA. Um, okay. What other and, what other bills interest you that are that are pending in the well, legislation this session? One of the bills that we're watching is uh, dealing with the mo grid modernization mm. and. Um, let me see, oh, so, so it's House Bill 1943, and it's just, um, it started off as a kind of a bill to, uh, giving DG the right to interconnect. But there's really no right to, we thought it was dangerous to put something like that in statute because um, the ability to interconnect should be addressed through tariffs, 
through rules. And because um, you might need to change the plan. Yeah, you yeah. can't use the legislative yeah. process. Yeah. Um, uh, to make it, it's just too long a process, too uncertain. So, you know, we thought first of all, there really is no right to interconnect. But if you meet all of the tariff provisions, then you have the ability to interconnect. And, and you can put yeah. that in rules, and then you can, you know, confer with the utility and find maybe. You know, technically things may have changed and changed the rules to meet the technical changes, so the, that w that works a lot better. Right. Yeah. And and but you know, just the ability to interconnect isn't grid modernization. Right. You know, again, we're talking about the whole system right. uh, uh, approach. So, basically, what the bill does now is lay out a proceeding before the PUC and the the principles that the proceeding should follow. And um, I think the one that, the principle that sticks in my head um, is basically the grid needs to be compensated. Uh, people need to pay for the services that you receive from the grid. And in turn, services that are provided to the grid that are of value should be um, compensated fairly. So maybe the okay. numbers, the way it works right now, under this is rulemaking authority would grant you. Is that what it is, or no, a no, special no. kind of docket? It, this is just policy guidance. Policy guidance. Mm -hmm. But this, it sounds like this would enable you to change some of the dollars and cents charges yeah. Uh, yeah. that that go on in order to, uh, you know, comport with right. uh, the realities of the yeah. situation. Yeah, um, you know. Uh, we need a well, the fixed cost of operating the system needs to be covered. Mm -hmm. and, and so you know, people who use the services of the grid should be paying for that too, across the board fairly. Is that, then, you're talking about the, uh, the base rate, you know, the, the rate, uh, the $16, $17 rate um, that mm -hmm. the utility charges if you yeah, are, that's have a PV. Yeah, that's yeah, not that sufficient. That may not be sufficient to yeah. meet the cost of providing that the, service. The fixed cost of the system. Yeah, that's a good. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think then, then, um, then you're taking more of a market-based approach in, um, uh, uh, in the development of mm -hmm. the system. Because I, I don't think anybody can argue that the, uh, the grid is insignificant. I mean, that's the critical infrastructure yeah. that makes everything work. So that, I mean, are you taking positions on this? Would you support that bill? Uh, the, yeah, the, the commission, we support it in its present form. Mm, okay. Yeah. And we worked with some of the stakeholders in getting it to this present form. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this is an active session. Uh, yeah, a lot of it has been defensive, but yeah, <laughs> it's been an active session. But you've got an ace in the back of your pocket because you kind of know how things work there at the ledge. And I don't know how many people watching the show know that you used to be yeah. the chair of the uh, the uh, House for quite some Committee. time, actually. Yeah. yeah. So you know yeah. how those things yeah, really so, work. So. Yeah. <laughs> so you, you're, you're, you must be pretty formidable <laughs> over then, there when you're trying to get something the, done. <laughs> so now being on the other side, I mean, it's a lot easier to write the bills than to implement, and that's why, you know, I'm up there playing defense. <laughs> 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 yeah. But we, we have lots of good policies in place, and, um, you know, it's just a matter of implementation now. I mean, I think the general principles are are, are really good um, and, you know, have us moving in the right direction, um, whether it's the renewable portfolio standards or the energy efficiency portfolio standards, or even, um, boy, we, um, we also have a policy on fossil fuels that, um, you know, they, we need to diversify our fossil fuel portfolio, um, you know. So it's not just all oil. Yeah, use different strategies, different procurement strategies, you know, and when we use 
fossil fuels, it should be the most efficient way possible. Mm -hmm. yeah, eke all that efficiency out. <laughs> well, we're going to have the efficiency or possibly the inefficiency of a break now. <laughs> I'm not sure which one. So this is uh, Think Tech Talks. We're talking about Hawaii, the state of clean energy, because it's Wednesday. We're schmoozing with the chair, Mina Morita, chair of the PUC. And my co-hosts for this discussion are uh, Sharon Moriwaki and Ray Starling. We'll be right back. Hi, my name is Dr. Rafi. Every week, I'm right here at Think Tech Hawaii, 3 p.m. on Mondays. My show is Boards as Bio Briefings. What do we do here? Well, we watch sperm swim. We see if they catch anybody. We check out the latest biosimilars. You know, the kind that, uh, what was his name? The guy with the bicycle? Uh, I guess we forgot his name, but he was taking EPO and other human growth factors. We'll be talking about human growth factors. You want to know where to get some? Maybe I'll tell. Anyway, you can catch me, as I said, every week right here, Monday, 3 p.m., Think Tech Hawaii, Dr. Rafi. You can also find me on Twitter, BioInfo Medical. Or you can catch me on Facebook, Dr. Rafael Boritzer. I'll be happy to converse with you. Aloha. Back, we're live. We're Hawaii, the state of clean energy. Schmoozing with the chair, Mina Marita. We really appreciate you coming down, Chair. Thanks. Appreciate it, too. <laughs> And uh, so I wanted to, you know, get to, um, you know, we, we wish we had more time for this. Uh -huh. We should do it again. <laughs> um, but, what, you know, moving on, I guess I would ask you, uh, you know, what dockets do you have at the PUC right now that you think are worth discussing? And don't give us the details. Yeah. Don't give no. us your inclinations. <laughs> don't, don't tell us what's hidden in your file. Just tell us what the dockets well, are. I hope our chief counsel isn't listening. <laughs> 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 but... Um, you know, off the top of my head, there are two that are pretty important. One is the um, integrated resource planning, uh, integrated resource plan that was filed by the HECO companies that's now before the PUC, which we have to make a decision on. Um, you know, and, and so this is the planning effort for the utilities moving forward in the future. So that is of interest to mm -hmm. um, everyone. The other docket that we opened last year was um, an investigation or review of the um, decoupling uh, process. And, you know, one of the things that we were looking at is, you know, is the risk fairly allocated between the rate payer and the utility? Um, uh, mm -hmm. Do we need, um, performance standards for the utility, and if so, what are the performance standards? Um, you know, other important dockets before us is uh, the inter-island cable. I'm going to ask you about that. And um, is the cable in the public interest? Uh, the, the you've had, you've had some hearings uh, We had a public cable. hearing both on Oahu and Maui. Yeah. And, and again, it's a redirection of where um, the projects stood back in 2008 to uh, the present. And it was moving from a generation tie system where um, there were projects proposed on Molokai and Lanai that would deliver electricity to Oahu. Um, the, Commission is looking at whether a grid tie proposal offers more benefits. So tying the Maui grid to the Oahu grid. Um, so it's so interesting because in 2008 with the Clean Energy Agreement, mm -hmm. the undersea cable was an inherent part of that agreement. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. it was a, it was a big part of that agreement. Mm -hmm. It was all the detail was in there. Considering that the agreement itself was really more like an agreement to agree instead of a real agreement. It was sort of a statement of intention by the administration and the parties at the time. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, uh, there was a fair amount of detail in there, exactly how that was going to work. And then there was a statute later that created that uh, the, special... The transmission utility. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, anyway, so that's, that's yeah. one of two uh, big um, 
Investigative dockets, yeah. That right. one in the uh, big right. wind document. Right. Docket, and, docket. and I think, you know, from where we, you know, I, I, I several times I mentioned about, um, you know, we're moving from clean energy 1.0 to clean energy 2.0, where clean energy 1.0 was mainly focused on renewable projects. And, um, you know, the, the, it, it was rewarding early adopters, um, focused on tax credits to mitigate the cost of renewable projects. You know, and we've moved on since then. We're in clean energy 2.0 where we're trying to find the most cost effective way to transform the system. Um, you know, we've seen renewable energy prices drop, uh, project costs drop, and that's really exciting. But you know, the transformation isn't just about renewable energy generation. It's about energy efficiency. It's about um, uh, cost. A lot of it is focused on cost. How do we bring the cost down? Um, a lot of it is what are the right investments to make so we have a no regret or least regret strategy <laughs> as we move forward because technology is changing so quickly. You know, we've got technology evolving, prices dropping, so um, where do we make the right investments um, so it's a no regret or least regret? <laughs> no regret. Mm -hmm. I, I remember, I don't know if, if you were there, but uh, Josh Strickler came and talked to one of our programs uh -huh. at the Plaza Club and he talked about the, uh, what was it, the caterpillar in the salad. <laughs> said, oh, yeah. This is the same but thing as no regret. Mm -hmm. You know, whatever you do, try to keep the caterpillar out of the salad. <laughs> it's the same thing. <laughs> I, I had some notes here from an earlier. So we basically have, um, you know, in Clean Energy 2.0, we, we have three core regulatory goals. The first one is encourage prudent investments in and the utilization and optimization of assets, both utility and non-utility, centralized and distributed, and bring efficient and cost-effective benefits and value to the electric system to serve the public good. And the second is appropriate the allocation of fi fixed costs to maintain and enhance the electric system. So that concept of you pay for the services you receive from the grid, and you are fairly compensated for services of value to the grid. And then the third is accessibility, fairness, and the opportunity for all ratepayers to benefit from clean energy policies. So that's all circling around those charges, circling around the issue of the, uh, the, the homeowner who has the PV as against the homeowner who doesn't have the PV. Mm -hmm. And these are, these are difficult problems and probably require more than one rule change yeah, yeah. to fix I mean, it. You know, we have, you know, the regulatory compact was pretty s straightforward. You know, that, um, you know, the, the utility would have a franchise. They would make these prudent investments that, um, uh, that would serve the public good and in return the customer was obligated the, the, the utility had the obligation to serve and the customer had the obligation to buy. But with um, customer choices now, you know, that regulatory compact is being um, eroded and it's not clear what the obligations of the utility is or the obligations of the customer. But I think, you know, for the utility, um, you know, there's still a social compact of relying on the utility to make sure that this essential services is available to everyone, you know, affordably, reliably, and safely. You know, yeah. and, and so that's that's the bigger goal in developing the system. Well, that that takes me to um, you know the the last point of discussion, which is the evolution of the PUC. I mean, you've seen mm -hmm. it now for four years. Three. Three. Okay, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. roughly, right in there. Seems like um, eight. Right? <laughs> yeah, <we're just laughs> no. <laughs> I got more gray hairs than when I started. Mm -hmm. But you know, it's, it's changed. I mean, uh, so many things have changed. I mean, and yeah. you've been at the center of so much mm -hmm. change. You know, 
And, um, and I'm thinking, you know, back in 2008, we had, as we discussed, you know, one set of circumstances, mm -hmm. and those have really changed a lot. Yeah. Our whole orientation, our, our discovery of, of the statue in the marble, as yeah. it were, you know, mm -hmm. it's all different now. And, and our sense of, um, you know, our sense of the ability to create a world-class system, mm -hmm. you know, our self, our self image, mm -hmm. as far as energy is concerned, has mm -hmm. changed. So how has the PUC changed since you got there? I mean, I'm sure it was one thing walking in the door, mm -hmm. you know, with your special knowledge as a, a chair of the House Energy Committee forever, <laughs> and now, three years later, I mean, what, do you, what are your thoughts about that? Well, I think, you know, um, first of all, if you look at the three commissioners, we come from three different backgrounds. And um, it, in a way, we're all each so different, but we also complement each other with our skills. And then I think the other um, big change at the commission is you have um, half of the staff which have been there for a while that are seasoned, that understand regulation, and then you have the other half of the staff that um, are just so excited about being part of this transformation. Um, you know, the, their commitment to public service is growing. They bring in new ideas. They they see things differently. You know, thinking out of the box. Mm -hmm. um, and and so I think you know that mix is really exciting um, and you know I couldn't be more proud of, of the um, commissioners as well as our staff. In terms of looking forward you know um, to further evolution mm -hmm. um, I say revolution or evolution whatever <laughs> <laughs> further it's change yeah. <laughs> where, where do you see it going you know I mean I'm reminded of um, I had a case in front of the mm -hmm. PUC in the 90s it was about MPOE. I don't know if you deal with that issue. Minimum point of entry for telephone lines. Because oh, when yeah, my firm was involved in, uh, you know, the Building Owners Association, uh -huh. and that was a new deal out of the Telecommunications Act of 96. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I went down there, and I could feel the cobwebs. <laughs> the PUC didn't really do much. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's all totally changed now. Oh, it now. really has. I now can tell you, has, that. you know, and There's no cob cobwebs there now, yeah. <laughs> not a yeah. one. So the question is, you know, looking forward, you mm -hmm. know, in this, in this, I mean, I would say not only are things changing, Mina, but they're changing at an escalating rate, you know, accelerating yeah. rate. And I think, you know, uh, you know, in 96, I believe, you know, that whole, the, that, uh, the whole issue was telecom, yeah. you know, and the yeah. changing business model of, you know the, the 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 incumbent monopolies at that time, yeah, yeah. and um, you know I, I I believe the chair at the time. I mean the the, the whole focus was on on um, uh, telecom issues and you know electricity at the time to the yeah. back seat and trucks. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, so and, regulating and transportation <laughs> and sorry. I'm and now it's. You know, the focus is primarily on uh, energy issues. Yeah, no surprise. And I think that the difference right now with the help of Hawaii Energy and taking this whole systems approach, you know, we're using the PBF not only to uh, uh, in addressing electricity issues, but also when we look at the um, private water and sewer companies or the Board of Water Supplies, and in how to increase their efficiencies um, as a way to help reduce rates for ratepayers of those utility services. Um, you know, in, in a way, we're looking at how to um, benefit all customers um, directly and indirectly um, uh, using electricity. Was that, was that a that was that, not that, very succinct, but no, you know. no but you know, I mean, in the, in our last show, last last hour, mm -hmm. we had um, Todd Lowe of, of the Department of Agriculture here, mm -hmm. and he's uh, and he's the one who supervises the aquaculture aspect of it. Mm -hmm. So we got to call him the protein dude. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. 
I think you're the sustainability lady. <laughs> <laughs> because more of sustainability issues hit you, really, mm -hmm. than uh, other agencies. And mm -hmm. you have more control over it going yeah. forward. So, you know, we're not specifically um, dealing exclusively with electricity rates, but we're also indirectly trying to affect um, other services that are impacted by the high cost of electricity, mm -hmm. by promoting efficiency, um, the, the possibility of um, demand response opportunities, um, like I, again, optimizing the, the entire systems, system from different angles. So the challenges are out there still, even oh, yeah. increasingly. And you know, the, the potential, we, we just, finished up the potential study for energy efficiency and um, the 4,300 gigawatt hours by 2030 uh, probably, well, there's probably 50% more potential yeah. out there, you know, so yeah, lots okay. of opportunities. Well. That megawatt. <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to, uh, we, we are out of time actually, uh, I'm going to mm -hmm. ask uh, Ray to, uh, uh, you know, give his closing remarks and then Sharon, well, we're really good at this by the way. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, we want to thank you for coming and being with you, oh, us today, and I, I know you've, you've given at least two speeches today that I know <laughs> of, I, and, and I know that you're constantly on the move, it's very hard to get up with you, but <laughs> we really appreciate your coming by and, no, uh, and sharing this time with us, and I, I too would like to see her come back and uh, and talk mm -hmm. more about what's going on because it's a constantly changing map and we don't we don't really have the map that they used to have in the old good old days mm -hmm. where they do it the same way every time there's no map mm -hmm. for us we're finding our own way as we yeah. go and and that's a it's a great exciting thing but it's very challenging mm -hmm. for us so mm -hmm. good, best of luck to you and thank you again for coming no, thanks, Ray. Appreciate yeah. it. Thanks, Jane. Now, wait till you hear Sharon go. Okay. Sharon, why don't you close? Okay. I too want to thank. Is this on? I too want to thank Nina, uh, really, for the leadership, uh, both from the legislative end and now in implementing it and PUC. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that we remember when the PUC was just doing rate cases and contested case hearings. Let me ask the control room. Is, do we have sound from Sharon? Okay, we do. Sorry, keep going. Uh, so I do remember when it was just contested case hearings. And, and so from there to now where you're actually creating policy and you've got the staff and the, the, the really thinking outside the box on a lot of different policy areas and providing the leadership of the state, I do really appreciate that and we hope that that continues on and this whole transformation is key uh, and PUC is, is right in the thick of that. So really thank you very much going at it and uh, hopefully we can be ready back um, maybe in the next couple of months uh, on clean energy day and both again on uh, this program so aloha. thanks Sharon you know and I, I forgot to mention a really important point you know people see the PUC process the contested case hearings as um, adversarial very legal adversarial kinds of proceedings and one of the things that we're trying to do at the PUC is, you know, we've got big technical and economic challenges before us, so um, we're kind of moving more towards a working group problem-solving process. So that's great. So that's, that's and you can, yeah. you can, if you you have the authority, I think, and mm -hmm. that's a great thing to do. Yeah, I mean, because that's what we need: problem-solving. Um, yeah. in, in putting forth the best system. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's great. That's the kind of leadership that we're seeing is the, the bringing every party together to, to create solutions. Uh, work. Proof again that we live in, in, in changing times, in new times. Yeah. We're it's in a new chapter. Times. The transformation yeah. continues. Yeah. yeah, and if we can't do it in Hawaii um, with our values of cooperation, you know, it'll be difficult to do any place else. Sure, that's our special yeah. sauce. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mina Marita, chair of the PUC, schmoozing with the chair. In Hawaii, the state of clean energy, especially on Wednesdays, 
uh, with uh, Sharon Moriwaki and Ray Starling and me, Jay Fidel. Thank you so much, Mina. Oh, and I you. only have one thanks more comment to make. Sure. When you get back to your office at the PUC, would you please check the exit sign? <laughs> you may be entitled to something very Actually, special. Actually, there's a fluorescent light that stays on all day, all night, 24 hours, 365 days a year. And every time <laughs> I drive past that night, I go, i got to talk to Ray about that. <laughs> okay, we'll take care of that. <laughs> Needs a motion sensor. <laughs> Thank you again, Mina. Thank you. Aloha. Thanks. Aloha. <laughs>